Oh, burr. I don't feel temperature in here, but I hear that there's a polar vortex going on for some of you and it's very, very cold outside. Makes you think about the sun and being on the beach and maybe having a sick marguerite, except you want to be wary of what's called margarita photodermatitis. <laughs> in margaritas, there's a lot of lime juice. And what lime juice can do, if you're on the beach sloshing around your sweet reet, you can get some margarita juice on your hands or your body or something like that. Or let's say you're one of my friends named Phil and you accidentally pass out on the beach and you spill juice on yourself. Oops. Anyway, <laughs> the lime juice in margaritas can be phototoxic, which means it can make your skin very, very sensitive to ultraviolet radiation. And so after you get this lime juice on your skin and then you are exposed to sunlight, it can cause scarring and blisters and terrible awfulness all over your body, like my friend Phil discovered. Oops. That's why this version of dermatitis is called margarita dermatitis. So be careful with your summery drinks when summer finally rolls around, because you know what they say, fun in the sun, is no fun when the sun burns them buns. <laughs> it's actually quite serious. And welcome to another edition of Because Science Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections and address them. And then I give you a hint as to what's coming up next on this channel. A hint? Start! <laughs> but getting right into it, in the last episode of Because Science, we are talking about the most evil plants that Poison Ivy could control with her superpowers. Now, we don't mean that plants are evil, that they're out to get you, they just want to protect themselves. So we are trying to think of the most devious defensive mechanisms that Poison Ivy could employ if she was to use plants against superheroes and heroines. But what did you have to say? I said that she could use something like giant hogweed or manchineal or dendrochnide moroides. <laughs> they would make very, very potent weapons if she was fighting someone like Batman. But what did you have to say? Our first comment comes from Aspen Hansen, who says, in my D&D game, the players went to the jungle and I made living tree enemies out of the manchineal wood. Hoo -hoo. The players set them on fire. They regretted that decision. See, some of you are already way ahead of me using evil plants to... S Wait a second. There's another comment here uh, from Trevor Christians, who says, She'd use Manchineal? My gods, my dungeon master had us encounter those sons of birches in his campaign. Are, are you two from the same game in the same video? Bringing people together. If you both are from the same game commenting separately on this video about how you hate Manchineal smoke because it can blind you and your characters, <laughs> I don't know, what are you, a rogue? That's pretty awesome. They rolled a 20 for Coincidence. It was a coincidence check and they rolled a 20. Woo! Our next comment comes from Seth Dawson who says, Hey Kyle, love the episode because you go into one of my favorite topics. In a way, marketing has had a huge effect on the dangers of blood root, which we mentioned in the episode. A big reason for this uh, is because people want cheap home remedies to remove their warts or to cure cancer, and then they buy black salve ointment that contains extracts from this plant to do so. What they end up doing is getting giant holes in their skin at the application site. Poison Ivy has allies in the quack department. Yes, unfortunately, blood blood root and the extract, the sap, which can destroy the layers of your skin. Unfortunately, that has been co-opted by so-called alternative medicine treatments that are seeking to cure uh, people's tumors and, and cancer. They tell people to apply it to your skin and it straight up kills those skin cells, which are then sloughed off by the body like you have gangrene. And they claim that this can help um, cure what ails you. Of course, these treatments are not effective in curing something like cancer and they can be severely disabled. Figuring. So yes, unfortunately, blood root, like we said, poison ivy could use is incredibly and dangerously effective. You know what they call alternative medicine that works? Medicine. I'd stick within the bounds of, you know, the not burning your skin off. That's not to say that you can't get medicines from plants. In fact, we get many, many, many medicines from plants. We just want to apply them in a right, in the correct way with evidence-based, science-based treatments. This is not one of them. Our next comment comes from Mavrock, who says, Poison Ivy used Vine Whip. Batman is dark type. 
It's not very effective. That is accurate Pokemon stuff. That's what I want on this show. What is the next comment? Help me, I can't stop talking like this. Someone, I'm not kidding, please, someone help me. Gonna start clapping. Now, what am I on Twitter? I like to use hand emojis. Our next comment comes from a number of you and you all say something about Superman. If you used phototoxic sap, like from uh, the giant hogweed on Superman, that would make him allergic to the sun. Wouldn't that be a great attack against him? I would suspect that Superman has super skin, so even if you were to make his skin super sensitive to ultraviolet radiation, such that it would cause blisters and something like that in your skin, he would be able to handle it. But if he couldn't, that would be such a smart and sciencey thing for a comic to have, for Poison Ivy to be like, sorry, Clark, you have some phototoxic sap on your skin there, I recommend staying out of the sun for a few days. Our next comment comes from Andres Arancio, who says, Comic concept! Batman reveals in a discussion with Alfred about how he wanted to use Wayne Enterprises to lock away all the dangerous plants from Gotham by buying or bribing the whole plant selling market, specifically to stop Poison Ivy from getting something like Bloodroot or uh, the Dendrochnide Moroides plant on her arsenal. Obviously, due to the narrative, the comic is about Poison Ivy getting a hold of all those plants and wreaking havoc on Gotham. Heck, want Batman to be badass nerves of steel? Have him stabbed by the needles of the Demoroides plant in the climax of a story and make him struggle with the want to end it all to stop the pain. Or if you want to be tear jerky, you can make Damian Wayne or another of the Bat family get the effect and force Batman to lock them up for their own good. I'd buy that comic, and I've never bought a comic. Our next comment comes from frequent commenter Ninja Bear Films, who says, Giant hogweed sap is basically the worst idea for a practical joke to put in someone's sunscreen. Yeah. You monster. Wesley Welch says, I still have scars from when I fell into hogweed as a kid. No, don't put that in sunscreen. It's the opposite of sunscreen. It makes your skin hypersensitive. And then you, and then, don't want that. But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode of Footnotes, I gotta give to, I apologize in advance, Pavel Wisniewski, who, tells a story about the hogweed in his country and it sounds like aliens conquering a planet and I love it. The hogweed comes from the Caucasus and was imported to Central and Eastern Europe in uh, the 50s and the 70s because it grew like crazy and the amount of green mass and high acidity were perfectly suited for the production of cattle food. It could not be eradicated, even cut to the ground it was able to grow. After the first euphoria, however, came a reflection. Acidity had begun to be a problem as it has corroded agricultural equipment at an alarming rate. The cows did not want to eat it, and even if they ate it for unexplained reasons, it made the milk taste whatever that word is. It was tried many times to eradicate it, but to no avail. He spread ev I think he meant it, but he spread everywhere, and at some time he took practically all of Europe. Wherever someone sees it, it is removed immediately, but it is hard to kill. The amount of herbicide needed to get rid of this hogweed was so great that all of the other plants in the area died, and the zone was no longer suitable for cultivation, and the hogweed had the chance to survive anyway. Wow, hogweed sounds like an absolute horror show, and for telling us all about it, Pavel, you are indeed a super nerd. What? What did you expect? But of course, I'm not always right. Sometimes I forget essential set dressing. So what did I get <laughs> wrong last week? What's that? It's time for the corrections. <sighs> Our first correction comes from Cyberclops on Twitter who says, Poison Ivy couldn't use Manchineal because Gotham is a northern city. It's a tropical tree. Maybe that's why she doesn't use those types of plants that you mentioned. She cares for plants and wouldn't want to grow something that would die because of her negligence. That's just part of her psyche. I think that's a very good point, Cyberclops, although I think that uh, Dr. Isley could probably just go to a tropical plant store or have her own specialized greenhouses set up around Gotham to enact her evil plans, but it's a point well taken. She would probably have to uh, work with the plants that were only native to her area, and maybe that is why she deals with regular old vines and trees. Okay, fair enough. Back. Uh, our next correction comes from Boxhead6177, who basically says, well, 
Batman and other heroes usually wear suits that cover the majority of their bodies. All the stuff that we mentioned uh, that Poison Ivy could use in terms of uh, contact damage and uh, destroying skin and stinging people, that would be totally ineffective against someone like Batman unless it was specifically stinging his face. And if you uh, were fighting someone like Iron Man, it might be completely ineffective. I think that's totally right. Against many, many heroes, all the plants that we suggested wouldn't be all that dangerous. I think it would make Poison Ivy more dangerous in general if she used a tree like the Mansion Eel. But you're right, it wouldn't affect heroes as much. Although, there is a workaround for this kind of thing. Consider the other kinds of plants that she could use if she was going for more of a brute force approach. That's what the next correction gets to. Blake Lisman points out, uh, what about dropping a redwood tree on someone over and over again? That would really hurt. Dare I say it, it would even be lethal. 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 Yeah, imagine using something like a giant redwood tree. This is General Sherman. It is the largest tree that we know of on the planet. It has an estimated mass of over four million pounds. If Poison Ivy could make that thing move around, it could smash the Batmobile to pieces like that. Isn't that right? See? Another honorable mention comes from Tyler Smith, who points out that if Poison Ivy used something like pitcher plants or uh, Venus flytraps and mutated them to be huge, that would be even more ghastly. And I totally agree. If you've never seen a pitcher plant, they are horrible if you're an insect. But if they were huge, death by something like a pitcher plant would be horrible. They look like pitchers and they have liquid at the bottom of them. But that liquid is basically the intestinal juices of the plant. So when things fall in, they slowly dissolve and then are absorbed by the plant as food. So just think about it. If poison ivy could make a giant pitcher plant, you would be by the edge. You'd slip in because it's very slippery. You are inside of a liquid now and you are, uh, it, it's dark in the pitcher plant and the edges of the pitcher plant are so slick that you cannot climb back up and then your skin feels a bit tingly and you slowly realize that it's starting to fall off and there's nothing you can do to prevent yourself from being turned into a soupy mush for the benefit of a giant plant. But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode, I gotta give to recent frequent commenter Infinite Asim, who says, Okay, Kyle, love the show. Now, I believe you missed one way. Poison Ivy could kill a legit whole lot of everything on the planet. She could do this by acting on a microscopic level, and she could literally hold the entire world hostage. Infinite Asim speculates, what if Poison Ivy could control all of the world's phytoplankton? Those microscopic plants are responsible for the production of the majority of the planet's oxygen. If she could control all of them, she could control uh, basically whether or not we all live or die. If she could choose which population of phytoplankton dies or uh, is producing more ac oxygen somewhere else, then she could control who breathes, who doesn't breathe. She could make people feel uh, woozy. She could, she could, she could uh, put an, an entire city into a stupor. She would have so much power! It's a great science-y idea that would make a very good comic storyline, I think. You are indeed Infinite Asim, a super nerd. Ah! Now, if you are already subscribed to Alpha, you already know what the next episode of Because Science is gonna be because you have already seen it. But if you haven't subscribed to Alpha just yet, the next episode of Because Science is how strong is that young lad from the forest who has a fairy? It you know what I mean, right? That's right. The next episode of Because Science is How Strong is Link from the Legend of Zelda series? In all of Link's iterations over the years, he does many super heroic things, but he's never portrayed in a very heroic way in that he has something like a superpower, like super strength. Is there a way, though, we can figure out just how strong Link would have to be to do some of the things we've seen him do in the decades of Legends of Zelda? I think that we can, and that that strength would put him on par with some of the strongest superheroes, period. So go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet all about the most evil plants that Poison Ivy could control if she wanted to be even more villainous. And leave me your best comments, corrections, and questions for this show on youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and 
at Because Science on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget, the first episode of The Science of Mortal Kombat is now live. Ho ho, we see just what it would take to shatter a frozen head with nothing but your fists. It's awesome with some awesome special guests, and you're gonna wanna check that out. It's all on youtube.com slash because science. And don't forget, when you're in Australia, don't wipe your butt with leaves.